Hello and welcome back to Oncology for Medical Students and this section of videos on the molecular basis of cancer. This video will cover proto-oncogenes and oncogenes. In the previous videos we've talked about how cancers develop as a result of mutations to DNA, how these changes lead to the production of faulty proteins and how these proteins give the cells certain characteristics known as the hallmarks of cancer. We've also talked about how the genes involved in these changes can also be divided into two groups tumor suppressor genes, covered in the last video, and proto-oncogenes. Cells contain many genes that produce proteins that encourage the cells to move through the cell cycle and divide. The normal forms of these genes are called proto-oncogenes. When they mutate in a way that they are active all the time, they promote cell division and the development of cancer. The mutated forms of these genes are called oncogenes. Where tumor suppressor genes stop the cells moving through the cell cycle, like the brakes of a car, oncogenes are like the accelerator pedal. Where a loss of function of tumor suppressor genes promote the growth of cancer, it's a gain in function of proto-oncogenes, turning them into oncogenes that leads, them, leads to the growth of cancers. Because we have two copies of each gene, to stop a gene from producing a properly functional protein, both copies have to be taken out. This type of loss of function applies to tumor suppressor genes. But this isn't the case with oncogenes. Because we're talking about genes that gain a function, it's only necessary for one copy to become mutated to promote the growth of cancer. The most commonly mutated oncogene in human cancers is the RAS oncogene. To see how it functions, again, we'll have to have a look inside the cell. In normal cells, in its inactive state, the RAS protein is bound to a molecule called GDP, guanosine diphosphate. In order to become active, the RAS gene must substitute the GDP molecule for another, GTP, guanosine triphosphate. This happens via the action of a protein called a guanosine triphosphate or GTP exchange factor. This type of protein exchanges the GTP on the inactive RAS protein for a GTP, which activates the RAS protein. RAS then in turn activates a number of transcription factors that lead to the activation of genes involved in progressing through the cell cycle and dividing. The RAS protein then deactivates by the action of something called GTPase activity. This means it breaks down the GTP to GDP. It does this with the help of a protein called a GTPase accelerating protein or GAP. The inactivation is very important. It provides a way of controlling the RAS activity and therefore controlling cell growth and division. If the portion of the RAS protein responsible for the GTPase activity mutates, it may not be able to break down the GTP. This means that the GTP is stuck bound to the RAS protein and it's permanently active leading to uncontrolled cell division. Because the mutation is leading to a gain of function, only one copy of the gene needs to mutate to cause this to happen. Now that we've covered both tumor suppressor genes and oncogenes, I thought we'd finish with a quick comparison. Where tumor suppressor genes are involved in preventing cell growth and division, proto-oncogenes, or their mutated counterparts, oncogenes, promote cell growth and division. It's normally a loss of function of tumor suppressor genes that leads to the development of cancers, whereas on the other hand with oncogenes, it's a gain of function. To use the car analogy, the tumor suppressor genes are like the car brakes on the cell cycle, and, the, and in the case of oncogenes, 
the light of the car accelerator. Because we have two copies of each gene, in the case of tumour suppressor genes, you need both copies to be taken out to lead to the development of cancer. So they need two hits. In the case of oncogenes, they just need one mutation. Thank you.